Great. Okay, so just to go from the beginning. Um, obviously, this is just a demo system. Um, it should look reasonably similar on your own systems, but there might be a few um, differences. But generally, the functionality will be the same. Getting a bit of background noise there, so. There we go. There we go. Okay, um, just the, let me know if you have any questions, I'll pop them in the chat functionality. Okay. Right. So to begin with, we'll go to the admin panel and then to expenses. Um, and to, the first thing that you get here is the expenses admin. So as it says, this is the people that will have the full admin access to change any of the statuses um, and edit any expense that's submitted. Um, so obviously we probably wouldn't want all registered in that, so I'll remove that for now. Um, we've got administrators and managers. I'll just pop myself in there. Um, and obviously you can add anyone in there that you need to. Um, the next permission we've got down the left hand side here is the finance team. So the finance team will, will receive notifications when expenses change to approved um, and have the right to exchange status to process. So basically anyone that can um, process the expense and say that it's been paid. Um, so I'm sure if we've got a finance, there we go. So we'll put the finance group in there um, and just apply the permissions. Um, and obviously anyone else you can add in there as necessary. The next tab down here is cost codes. Um, so cost codes can be from maybe a cloud, a codes that you've got from the accounts department that can relate to certain accounts that way. Um, they can also, um, you can also hide them. So if you have a cost code that was relevant um, just for a particular period of time or for a particular year or something like that, um, you can hide them. Um, and they're more specific than say like a category. So as you can see, we've got accommodation UK, accommodation overseas. Um, to add a new cost code in, you just click on the screen button here. We can add the code name. So um, we've got air travel, let's just put air travel Europe. Uh, we can give that a code. So, um, and then if you wanted to hide it, if it was in the past, you can never, always go in and edit it in the future. So we'd submit that one. It's added in. Air Travel Europe there, you'll see. Um, as we said, we can hide that one so it's not selectable when somebody's submitting an expense, um, or we can delete it. You'll see some of these are grey, um, and that's if the cost code's in use. So if there's an active um, an active expense that's been submitted that hasn't been processed and completed yet. Um, it's currently in use and so you won't be able to delete a cost code while it's being used. Um, the best thing really to do with cost codes though is to hide them so you can click on anyone and again as I said hide it um, rather than delete it just so, so you've got a record in the future um, and so that ones that were submitted with that previous cost code don't get lost. Uh, the next option we have down here is clients and projects. Um, so um, you can create multiple clients. So if you're billing clients for particular amounts of things and particular time, you can do that. Um, so you can create the clients. And once you've created a client, you'll see that you can add projects to them. So example on this one, we can click into that. You can either hide this client or you can click into the number of projects. So. Um, we can click on internet launch or we can add a new project, um, some training, and then click on the project manager, sub project manager. And again, if you needed to hide this project in the future, you could. So you'll be able to add a new project in and when somebody again is submitting uh, ex um, expense, they'll be able to select the client and then within that client be able to select a particular project. The next option that we've got down here is departments. Um, 
Yeah, the next one we've got is departments. So um, you can add in all the departments internally. Um, you can say there's a budget holder per department. Um, generally, when an expense is submitted, it will go to the user's manager, so whoever their um, organisational chart manager is set up as. Um, they can select, so to send it straight to a budget holder or the sub-budget holder for that department, um, and then it'll go to that person for approval if necessary. Um, so to add new departments, we'll just click on there. Uh, let's go with um, a new department. Expense type, you can say if you need a particular expense type in there or not. Um, main budget holder, go with, and then substitute budget holder here. So that's how we do that. Submit that, as you'll see. Sorry, let me go. Uh, so you will have to put an expense type that it relates to. So we can put in validation. So ones that can be submitted on that behalf of that. Uh, and submit. Um, and so when anyone spits one of those types of expenses, they'll be able to select that department. Again, um, you can delete ones that aren't in use, but as soon as one is in use, you can no longer delete it. Next, we've got the expenses types. Um, so these are more kind of um, top categories and then the cost codes can within that be subcategories. So we've got accommodation, so they'd tick that it was accommodation and then from the particular cost codes, they could click Accommodation UK overseas. Um, to add in expense types is pretty straightforward. Um, you can say what the expense type is, so, um, and then whether it can be used in projects or it needs to be hidden. Next up is locations, reasonably self-explanatory again. If you've got multiple locations, just add those in. When the user's submitting it, they just select the location that they're based at, and it will just be record recorded to that particular location. Um, settings is to do with the currency. So you can put in different currencies that you work in. Um, if it's multiple currencies, obviously you can add in more than one. Uh, so let's just add in another one as an example. Um, and then as you'll see, when we come to submitting an expense, you can select which currency that's in. Uh, the last thing we've got in this admin side is a disclaimer. So you can pop in um, any information that you would need the client or the end user that's submitting the expense to know. Right, so now if we just go to the front end of expenses here, um, you'll see to begin with anything that you've submitted um, will be on the main screen here, um, you'll see the status quite simply um, and you'll be able to see the amount and everything that it's for. Um, so when it comes to submitting a new expense, first of all, you get the sheet name. So this is what the expense would be called. Um, because you can add more than one uh, cost to an expense, you could have um, like a work trip. So um, trip. Um, the next you select your department, so if we're in the sales department. Again, as you saw on the back end here, each department has their budget holder and their substitute budget holder. Um, because my manager is the current administrator, that's who will always be the first level approver. Um, but and you can also select the budget holders or the substitute budget holder from the department that you selected. Um, location and then the currency. Um, so that once that's kind of all the information is filled in, you can upload any files. So you can upload your receipts there straight away, um, or you can add in your operational cost here. So this is the actual cost with the expense that you've got. So the description might be um, a hotel. We then see your department's automatically populated, um, but you can change that if you need to. Um, vendor, so 
Uh, let's just say Hilton. Expense type. So generally, obviously, you need to um, pop in relevant ones that you would use yourselves. Um, but we'll pop in travel for that one. Cost code uh, would be something uh, accommodation. Let's go accommodation UK. Um, expense date, so the date that the expense was incurred. Um, and then the amount, so let's say uh, 200. Um, obviously, if you've got the receipt or the email receipt um, and it's a policy to attach those, you can attach those there. Um, just by uploading them here, you can select that the receipt is attached and save that. And you'll see that becomes the first item on your expense. Um, project costs will appear down here. If you don't use projects um, and you don't have uh, clients and projects here, that whole section just won't display. Um, so I suppose it just helps. Uh, the end user to, I suppose, just instead of cluttering the screen. Um, but if you've got clients here and different projects, this section will display, um, and then you can add particular um, costs against a client. So um, just let's just say internet training. We select a client. Um, the vendor would be. Um, we could say it doesn't really, not really relevant, but we'll just pop it in there. Um, cost code, if there's any particular cost. Uh, so rail travel. Um, and so maybe it was just the cost of getting there. Um, we can add it to a particular project. Just choose the date that it happened on. Um, then you are able to select whether this client is billable um, to the this information is billable to the client. That's more just for the accounts department to know if that's something that needs to be billed on um, or not, whether we've attached the receipt and how much it's for. So, and then we can save that. So you can save many project costs and operational costs against a particular expense as needed. Once you've done and filled everything in, we can submit that for approval. We'll see that they go into submitted. Um, because I'm the administrator, um, you can click into the expense, take a look at everything that you need to do, and take a look at the different costs and things like that, and then we can change the status so we can approve that. You'll see then that one's now gone to approved, um, and then it would notify the um, finance team, so whoever's we've specified in this particular step. Um, once they've paid it and it's all been done, they can then change it to processed and it, the end user that submitted that will get a notification of that. Um, within expenses, there's a few other things that we can do up here. So the end user would always be able to view their own expenses, which is this page here. Um, manage any expenses, so any expenses that you've submitted or um, if you're a manager or a, on the finance team or a budget holder, you'll be able to view expenses that other people have submitted. So you can select a particular name, select a user that's submitted it, do that by department. You'll see these are just the marketing ones. Then you can say whether you want to view particular statuses, locations and why they're modified. So just if you're looking for particular information on um, what expenses have been submitted recently, that can all be done this way. Um, and the other one that we've got here is the option to have reports. So obviously with the expenses from the finance team and things like that, you probably want to be able to run reports on those. Um, you can again select the user, um, select if it's on a particular client, when the dates are, the different projects, um, and the, from the different departments. We can then filter that, download as CSV, um, or you've got these additional options. So these are pretty much what we um, set out in the admin side. So you can choose the location, the type, the cost codes that you've previously created, statuses, uh, the currency, uh, bill, and then again, cost type. Um, so just say we, 
that and then you can filter by that um, and download it for future. Um, that's pretty much expenses in a nutshell. Um, we can go back to the admin side from here, obviously change anything that's relevant to be changed. Um, if you ever needed to hide anything in future, that again can be done. And then when you'll see if we hide it, when you go back to the front end here, and submit a new one. That's not no longer in the list. Um, just because it's, it's something that's not not able to be selected anymore. It's not deleted because you can still search for it in reports, but it is hidden so that users can't submit new ones in that way. Um, okay, um, so what I'll do now um, is unmute everyone. Um, so um, open to any questions, anything that wasn't very clear or you have any particular examples of things that you wanted to do yourself. Uh, Mary, is that mm -hmm. the pronunciation of your name? Sorry. Yes, Mari. Mari, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Hello, Mari. This is Ernesto Salas with Need Exanquia America. Uh -huh. I have two questions. Uh, uh, one quick question is, is this product included already in our Claromentis platform? It appears it, it is. I've seen it, but just to make sure. Yes, so it's included in um, every version of Claramentis. Um, potentially some older versions, it might not be installed. If it's right. not, you can pop in a change request, we'll install it, it's all included in your, um, the cost that you pay. My second question, very quick, when, when dealing with a travel expense report situation and probably some other types of uh, employee-based expense reports, uh, there could be the possibility of privacy where Maybe we just want employees to see their own expense requests and not anybody else's. Is that anywhere configurable? Is that how it's working or not really? Yes, so um, if you're first just an employee submitting an expense um, and you're not a manager, you're not in um, any of these admin or finance or budget holder roles, um, you will only see the, your own expenses. Um, if you're a budget holder, you'll only see the human resources one. However, if you're an admin, as we've set up here, you will then see all expenses. Right. That's it. Thank you so much, uh, Myri. That's okay. Any other questions? Not in the uh, approvals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, dropping out a little bit there. What was the question? Uh, regarding the approvals, is that is there more than one layer you can do? Was it only on one one set of approval per, or one approver per claim? So it's is currently one approver per um, expense. Um, it will obviously then have to go to um, the finance. So once it's been approved by the approver person, the, so either the manager or um, if you choose it to be approved by a budget holder, once it's been approved by that first person, um, it will then get sent to these group of finance team um, and they'll have to process it. So they could still at that point um, reject it, but um, generally it's approved by your manager or the budget holder and then it's the finance team is the one that will process it. But the initial approval is only by one person, yeah. One person. Mm -hmm. And regarding the, uh, the clients um, that you can add, can we, is there a way we can kind of load up, load in a list of clients, etc. to be manually added each time? Or can... Uh, um, so can currently you... it's manually each time. Um, if you had, say, a pre-populated list that you needed all the clients to be in there, or if you're loading them from a particular database, <coughs> um, Ooh, apologies. Um, it could be possible um, with like a custom script or some custom work, um, but you need to pop in a change request and um, our custom developers would see if they could just build something that would either run it one time or if you wanted it to continually update from somewhere else, they might be able to configure that as well. And my third and last question is regarding the foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. um, so say 
you had a mixture of claims for US dollar and GBP, you need a separate form for each one, isn't it? Mark the procedures now. So you have you have one form for US dollar and you like you put the items on that one and then you do a second claim for GBP. Is that how I understand it? Uh, yes, yeah, so you would do it I, the way that it's um being created is that you do it in the currency that you paid in. So the currency that the um, receipt was in, um, something like that. Um, and that would be how you select the currency that you've got. And does it, does it um, translate it to, so say we did US dollar, does it then translate it to pounds? It's got any functionality like that for the end user to look at? Or would it it wouldn't it would only do it in US dollar and then I suppose it would be down to the finance department to say what the exchange rate they use or what the exchange rate um, that's set to kind of let the end user know um, if, it, if they're being paid in the in a different currency to the one that if they were claiming the money back in a different currency to the one that they paid in um, that would be down to the finance department okay, cool. And then when you can you also then send workflow back as well if you're not happy with something when you're approved on? Um, so there's a note section here. Um, so if um, you needed some particular um, in, more information, you could put that in there. Um, when, let's go back to. Um, so if you were the person that needed to approve it, rather than just clicking straight on approve and the status, you could add a note in and that would then go to the person, um, the, the person that submitted it, um, just in case if you needed any more information or you needed some more clarification on what that was. Um, and then you could just not approve it until um, that point. Um, you can obviously also reject things if, if it's not an expense that's valid. Um, and I suppose it's probably at that point worth popping a note in saying why you've rejected it. Okay, that's all my questions. Great. Have we got any other questions? No. Okay, that's no problem. Um, so what I'll do is I will, um, obviously I've got a recording of this, I'll pop it on our Discover portal. Um, if you've got any questions, you can pop them in support tickets or through Discover. Um, any further follow-up questions, and then um, I'll get back to you on there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.